This is Dr. Derek Jones here from Ochsner Sports Medicine Institute in New Orleans. And I'm going to go over uh, use of the uh, BioBrace to augment uh, an allograft in this case, but it can be used to augment autologous tissues as well. I'm going to use the ComMed Infinity button on the femoral side and the ComMed tibial exoshape on the tibial distal fixation side. And then I'm using a number two suture to just do a whip stitch, standard whip stitch, even our ends out. And usually about a centimeter apart as I come down. It's remarkably strong and takes the suture very well. So your standard modified crack out stitch, you don't have to lock it, is fine. And you want to go through the center of the bio brace. That's 0.25 centimeter mark. And usually about an inch up. And then we'll simply come back down. Right through this again. And since I went a centimeter apart, I can go between the previous throws going up to come back down so I don't damage those same areas. I don't want to put too much of a stress riser at the same spot. So I want to go between the previous throws coming back down. Once again, right through the center, but between each previous throw. I keep the vibrates the full length, um, then we'll cut it off later on. I usually keep it the full length the entire time. Always remove the tissue at the end if I can in any case. So we take the Alice clamp off here, we'll flip it around in the same fashion as before. So it's actually very good at augmenting any extra articular procedure as well, your MCL or postal corner. So now we're going to take our biobrace and add it to our allograft. One question is whether you want the biobrace exposed to the bony contour of the femoral tunnel, and tibial tunnels, and I would suggest yes because it has collagen type 1 that will allow for incorporation of that biobrace and tissue together. So now we're going to pass it through our loop here. As we pull through, once again, we want to continue to think about keeping the biobrace exposed to the outside part of that graft. So once it's pulled into the joint, into the tunnel, the biobrace will be exposed to the healing potential of the patient. The blood flow will go towards the biobrace instead of being blocked by the allograft itself. We've placed our button over proximal fixation. Distally, we have a tensioning device, the graft fix, that will allow us to tension. So now we're at 20 pounds of tension. That seems pretty good. I've tensioned all four limbs equally. And so this is going to prevent any creep. The biobrace, as you see, is on the external side of the allograft. This will be exposed to the patient's healing potential, the bone tunnel, and allow for uh, incorporation and use of the unique biologic capabilities of the biobrace. So we have our four limbs, the allograft, biobrace, allograft, biobrace. I'm going to go in between the limbs of tissue, come towards myself. This will invert the knot in the center between the grafts, then come across all four limbs now. So I went through two on my side. Now I'm going through one, two, three, four limbs on the, the entire construct to grab all four limbs in this case. So now the suture is going through all four limbs. And then one final throw, open it back up between the four limbs, come on the opposite side through the biobrace and through the allograft tissue. And then I come up in between. As I come up in between, you'll see that's going to dunk the knot, but I'm going to be able to maintain the tension. And it just dunks the knot in between the four limbs of the tissue. And you see the knot is not present on the surface, but controlled my graft with the suture. And I'm still at plus 20 pounds of tension on that now. I'm doing it one more time now. Go to my side first, do the bio brace and allograft on this side. Go through one, two, three, four and then come back between again to dunk the knot. One, two, on the opposite side. And throw it back down again. Just lay the knots down in there as you would with any standard suture technique. Four throws usually for me. Cut the sutures and the grass prepared. So that's the standard technique for preparation of the uh, bio brace and either autograft or allograft. So once again, we drill our tunnel, our femoral tunnel, to a diameter of 10 millimeters and a depth of 25 millimeters. So now I'm just marking that the 25 millimeter mark for my graft. So a nice demarcation there. That will tell us when we pass 25 millimeters of graft into the femoral tunnel. Now, we know our cortical button went through at the 30 millimeter mark with our 3.5 millimeter spade tip. And so we'll mark the looped suture with the button at the 30 millimeter mark. We want to be pretty detailed with our demarcation here so we know when we really have passed this button, we can flip it. One technique is to take advantage of the biologic capabilities of the collagen type 1 within the bio brace. And now we're going to place blood directly on the bio brace. So here's the bio brace. We've demarcated. Obviously, you would want to demarcate these sites of uh, passage of the graft and button along the button prior to placement of the blood. 
because that will block your ability to see that when you're passing the graph. And then we simply drip it on our biobrasion. You see how it soaks up that blood quickly. Now I've been amazed at how this strong construct has this biologic capability to soak the blood immediately. And so we're really going to take advantage of the healing potential and strength and load sharing in particular. That's the important term, load sharing of the biobrace while this graft incorporates in the patient. And then I'll just go between, get the allograft as well. And so I usually do this at the end. The graft has been tensioning appropriately. We've got rid of the creep. We're ready to pass it. So we put our blood on immediately prior to passage of the graft, and now we're ready to go. And so there you can see we have now soaked our biobrace in the patient's blood, and the healing process has already begun. <laughs>